Hey guys, just a quick thing before the video starts. So I do have one more deer hunting video to come for sure, and you guys are gonna love it. Check out my Instagram if you guys don't already know. Please check it out. You guys are really gonna love it. We still got one more deer hunting video, but yet, but that takes a long time to edit. So I'm gonna put this video out right now. It's harvesting that we did on no December 4th, and we are still picking corn. We're gonna be picking corn for a while, and it honestly wouldn't surprise me if we were picking corn in 2020. But anyway, stay tuned. We got a lot more videos to come. Thank you guys for watching. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hearts and Family Farms. And today, it is Tuesday, Wednesday, December 4th. And I just got to the farm. Pat and Cletus just left from the good semi. We flipped the good, we took the 99 Central Class Freightliner off the grain hopper and put the good semi on it. So we're gonna, Cletus and I are gonna run these today. I'm gonna run the day cab. The day cab will sit in full, so I'm, I'm unloading it right now. The pile's getting a little bit bigger than I'd like. Wet bin is, that first indicator light is on as you can see, so we got the dryer running and it's going to have to run continuous, but this is, we're only running one combine, it's only, it's 20 to 22 percent corn, so the dryer should be able to keep up and probably overtake us, so, yeah, I'm going to get this semi unloaded, I'm going to get some things around the around here, I'm going to drop the axle of the trailer, and I'll explain that why later, but I'm going to hook the trailer here soon after I get unloaded. Alright, so if you guys are curious, we pat bent this couple of, or a month ago or so I'll link the car right up here go check that out but I gotta go ahead and try and take this part and rebend it back but it's because it's starting to get worse and worse that I can't actually open this so while that back on hoppers on load I'm gonna try and do that got it off kind of see it's tweaked it's bent it's bent backwards so we got a press in there I'm gonna try and bend it back flat see if it'll work any better all I'm doing is basically just taking this press and just taking different angles, just trying to flatten it out as much as possible. And I got it done. So let's go ahead and go put this thing back on. But this 40 ton press is really, really handy when uh, you like to break stuff. Alrighty guys, so I just got it fixed. I shut the truck off just to allow, doesn't even be, well, I'm gonna go in and eat real quick so it doesn't even be running while I'm eating. So I'm just tarping this truck so I'm ready to go. I'm gonna pick up my tools. You can kind of see it's definitely, it's still a little tweaked, but it's much better than it was. I can at least turn it without hitting that bolt head, so. We'll probably have to take it to local welding or local fab shop to get it truly bent back if we want it done right. So, but I need to go up and eat so we can get you on. So I got new boots for deer season, or just new boots in general because my other ones lost their waterproofing, kind of started ripping. So, got new boots. So I'm breaking them in today because deer season is this weekend. So be expect to pause in some farming videos for some deer hunting videos, guys. Deer drives, I love it. Hope you guys will enjoy it too. But anyway, so I'm breaking them in and I already got them dirty. Gosh darn it! Cut day, cut day, cut day. There's Brian right there. He just he's just finishing up some cattle chores, and he's gonna go eat. I'm gonna go start up the semi, climb up this big, our biggest dry bin, just see where we're at for the level, and then I'm going to head out, go get some fuel, shocker, and then I'm gonna head to head to Bellevue. Pat's already picking. There's three rings left in that bin. Ay ay ay. Well, which means we're gonna fill that thing up today more than likely so I'm hoping we can do beans tomorrow otherwise we are going to be not sitting well we're gonna have to shut down at some point to move corn All right, let's head to Bellevue but first you gotta fuel up that's weird why am I hooking so what you guys don't know is what you're supposed to do is with these trailers you're supposed to drop them every couple of every so often to uh, grease that fifth wheel because what's how the semi works is on that plate there the trailer actually pivots so it needs to be well lubricated so i'm gonna pull this thing up to the shop and put some grease on it but right as i turned off the camera i realized i didn't do this yet so that's what i'm gonna do So how do you guys lube your fifth wheels? So what I do is I only lube the back two thirds because, and then when I, when I go to hook it back up, I lower the suspension. So when I lower the suspension, what'll happen is, I basically wanna get grease all over this fifth wheel plate. So I only grease two thirds of it. That's because I'll back up just a little bit more and then raise it up. That'll basically get a fifth wheel up tight and then I'll back up 
That'll shove the grease that's right here towards the front of the fifth wheel, and then everything will be greased. That's what I do. What do you guys do? There we go. I'm hooked up. Now I'll go get all the connections. Sweet. Looks good there. Check the other side. There's a latch that you actually unhook and rehook the kingpin. It's called a kingpin, is what that thing's called. Looks good there. And she's latched. Perfect. So now I'll stick all these connections up. This is your service brake. This is your parking brake. So basically your, your brake pedal, parking brake, and then trailer lights, power for the tarp. I'll hook those up and then we'll go get fuel. Also, it's a good habit when you hook up to a new trailer, guys. There's always a test the text that your kingpin's connected. So basically turn off your tractor brakes, but leave your trailer brakes on and just try and creep forward ever so slightly. If you're connected right, your, tra your trailer brakes will, stop, will hold you in place and your kingpin won't release. But if you're not connected, your kingpin will release. When your kingpin releases, you'll still have your, your landing gear and everything up. That way, if you do pull away too quickly, you won't wreck your trailer. Words of the wise there. And no, I have never done that before, but that's just what a wise man once told me. Thank you, Richard. Guess what? Fueling again. Like I said, guys, Every time I drive a truck, at least every other time, I gotta fuel something up. I think it's just me. I like to keep things full. I don't like running out of fuel. It happened once. I was a pain in the butt. I did it with the sprayer last year. That was not fun. Alrighty, just got fueled up. I'm gonna get out of here. Time to head to Bellevue. Well, that's the first. I'm in Bellevue right now and a uh, train's stopping me. Never been stopped by a train in a semi. That's kind of interesting. Forgot to say, it's an absolutely gorgeous day right now like I'm just in a sweatshirt and t-shirt that's all I'm in right now and it is just beautiful out probably 50 degrees sunny alrighty I just turned around right now gotta head back but that farm right there is a pretty famous Instagram farm both him and his dad the Hinchin fellas so it might be them right there yeah I see their windrower going out to cut hay maybe I don't know but anyway go check them out on Instagram link will be down in the description there they are. Hinch and Dairy Farm. Well, you guys might be wondering why the heck I'm parked along the road. Well, what we have to do is, because the, the fields and everything's so wet, we can't pull in to turn around. We get stuck up here. So I gotta basically pull on the road along the side of the road and grain car to pull up in the ditch to dump. I mean it's the least invasive way that we can do to traffic. We don't like doing it, but it's mid-December. We gotta get our crops out. Alrighty guys, so Pats, we're up here on top of the hill up at Bellevue. Right there is the last video where I was moving bales. The bales were in this barn right here, moving over the corn crib. So we're picking this corn here, which is good because we deer hunt that, we deer hunt that, we deer hunt that, we deer hunt that. A lot of fields around here we deer hunt and deer have a lot more places to hide when there's corn in the, the ground. When there's corn out in the fields. And we don't like corn out in the fields because deer destroy the corn out in the field. That's why we have to, as Brian would say, apply an application of pesticides. So Pat's gonna pick this off. He's probably ballpark about a third to a half done with this field. It's about 15 acres up top and 40 acres across the road. So we got plenty to do that'll keep us busy well past dark. And then we got 60 acres of my dad's stuff to do. Picking right now. The ground's firming up. It's a little slimy because it got a hard freeze last night. When it freezes and, re and thaws, it brings moisture up. So the ground's a little bit slimy from that, but that's gonna fill me. We actually got my cousin, Alan, who farms over by, almost by Webster City, kind of off I-35 there, north of Des Moines, about an hour. He's actually over here. He's gonna help us out for at least a couple days, which is good because we need all the help we can get during this dry stretch. Fun fact, this is my great grandpa's first tractor he ever bought brand new. A styled early 40s 19, uh, John Deere Model A. I really want to restore that someday. 
And Shane dug this out so we can actually close this door. Go Shane, you're the best. Bun's unloading right now. I'm gonna start the truck up and then head, uh, head south. I'm gonna check these beans real quick so we'll cross our fingers once we finish all the corn up here. We'll be ready to, we're gonna pick some beans, cross our fingers. It's not threshing good, so that's not a good sign. Hoi, <laughs> she's moist. That's probably 17 or 18 right there. That one's a little better. That one's probably 15, 14 to 15. I'm basically just feeling how much this pops. That's not bad. It's gonna be iffy, but maybe tomorrow afternoon or Friday, we can get hauling on beans. There we are, full truck. There goes my great uncle Bun. I'll have to go catch another load with Pat. He's gonna run grain cart for a couple hours and my dad's gonna take over. He's gonna tarp it. Almost got trapped by that thing. I didn't even I forgot that thing, the arm can, the arm comes, so. All right, let's take off, head to Preston. All right, so dumping my first load of the day. Well, my first gathered load of the day. We already fallen behind. I met Cletus just coming into Preston, which is like realistically, if we're keeping up at this rate, we're gonna need another truck, but we got some small fields Pat's gonna take care of, so I'll put him behind a little bit. Gonna get some fuel, so. There's some stuff we gotta do that's gonna slow us down, so I'm not too terribly worried about it, but I'm gonna go get the fuel truck filled up, which I don't know where that's at. Now I'm gonna grab me a smample of wet corn and dry corn just to give the dryer a gut check because the dryer has moisture sensors coming in and out so we know the moisture of the dry and wet corn. But it's always good to check that with a GAC or a calibrator. So I'm gonna grab a sample of each and you run up town and check it. Alrighty, so Alan's gonna go run up town and go check the, fuel, check the dry and wet corn moisture. I'm gonna take off in the semi so I can get going. Brian's gonna get the blower set up and then probably get the auger set up so we can start moving corn because we're gonna be out we're gonna be full here at home and like I don't know and tonight maybe if not tomorrow morning made it sitting alongside the road right now let's go ahead and get the drone up in the air it's golden hour it is definitely golden hour just the tail end of golden hour is the only only issue that's why it's kind of it's gonna get pretty dark towards the end but it just hit the tail end of golden hour it would have been really nice if Pat was picking right now so I fly the drone up in the air and I don't see him that's because he's getting fuel we actually do not have a fuel trailer. All we got is a little 100 gallon L tank on the back of one of our pickups. So when we're farther away, we actually a lot of times just have fuel delivered to us. Like right there, we just got 180 gallons. And usually a fuel tank can last us two days max with this combine. So it's, yeah, it's kind of stinks only having a 100 gallon tank. That's why when we're farther away, like Andrew, Bellevue, we, we got to bring up fuel every single day, if not sometimes twice a day. Yes, it's inefficient, but... It is what it is. So as you guys kind of just saw, Pat just had one row on each side there that was left. It was, you know, th this is a pretty jagged field. A lot of our fields up in this area are very jagged. They're not very easy to pick, so you got to give him some credit. He's been doing it for a while, but he's still, he's human. He makes mistakes. I mean, this is some challenging, challenging ground. And the drone doesn't even do it justice, how up and down and kind of pointy and choppy these this crop is and this ground is, so... But anyway, I kind of remember back here because right now it's actually December 9th that I'm recording this. Um, it's We just finished the second day of deer drives. This is the third day, but I actually only did two days this year, mainly because I got I had to go back to work and stuff. Um, and I'm going to be going to the F2F uh, conference. So I know you guys are going to be there. If you guys are seeing this right now, I will actually be just packing up with work and I'm going to be heading, heading west to Omaha. So anyone else going to be there? I know there's going to be a lot of guys, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of farmers. I think there's going to be over 4,000 people there. But anyway, anybody else are going to be there? If you guys see me, be sure to stay high. I'm going to be probably hope, probably hanging out with Brian Brown and Cola Corn Star is what it's sounding like. But we shall see. But anyway, let's back to, back to the video. So you can kind of see we're picking this hillside north of the house. Um, we typically do not turn our cattle loose on this we gotta we gotta put up quite a bit of fence if we do but we might actually this year there's a lot of down corn and that alfalfa there's some there's an alfalfa hay strip in there that wasn't cut only it was only cut once this year so there's gonna be quite a bit of alfalfa there so we might let the cows loose and plus uh just admire this photography this is i this is even with the cheap dgi camera like this is 
it was a pretty nice night. I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. It was a beautiful sunset. I mean, I cannot complain whatsoever. Other than the fact that I keep yawning. So I hope that, so I'm glad I'm kind of cutting this out for you guys. But anyway, so this 12 year old corn head has really helped us out because as you guys can kind of tell, this we do have a lot of point rows. And the less trips, the, the less time that you have to spend turning around, the better. So even though we can't go quite as fast with the 7088 and the 12 row corn head as, we, as if we had an 8 row corn head, we're still making a lot less trips down the field, which is a lot less wear and tear on the tires. Yes, it's taking a little bit more power with the extra row units, but we think there's an advantage. Plus, there's even some fields that we wouldn't be able to get into with an 8 row with an eight row corn head. With this folding 12 row, it folds up narrower than the duels, which is really, really, really slick. Gosh, flipping darn it. But man, I, I like that shot. I like shots that are kind of right even with the right even with the combine. So anyway, we are unloading on the road as we will be for, as we did in the last video, and we will be for the next couple. Biggest thing, the reason why is because it's just too wet. I, we'd get stuck with the semis in the field. It's just we have to do this. There's no other way around it. We're we're fortunate that we had a ditch that's wide enough and it's not very steep that we could just load with the grain cart in the ditch and the, put the semi. You can kind of see just right with the ed, the edge of its tires on the road and just put the hazards on we are on a pretty flat stretch we are on a flat stretch there's no danger at all cars just had to slow down a little bit oh they should have slowed down a little bit there's a couple times they just went zooming by but um it worked on ended up working out pretty well you guys will kind of see but we, it we didn't really tear up the the ditch as much as i thought we would but um we were still able to get our crops out and it was definitely marginal we would not have been able to get trucks in the field so we, I'm, we were fortunate to be able to get this stuff out but anyway back to the video after a live stream and um yeah a live stream so we're live streaming right now guys be sure to go check that out card will be right here in the i don't mean to flip you off upper right hand corner just got done with the live stream guys be sure to check it out if you guys haven't already Fun dumping on the green card right now. And this one will fill me up, so Shane and I are gonna head to Bellevue. Right, Shane? Yep. Woo! Been a while, but it's dark, as you can kind of see, but we have all three trucks sitting here. We got Cletus, myself, and Brian just pulled in with the quad. So we finished up everything on the north side of the road. Pat's just working on the south side of the road, just trying to open it up. He's just getting to that far. We're facing east right now towards the river. He's just getting to that far end. I can kind of see his lights reflect, reflecting. Bun's unloading on the semi. This will fill Cletus up. Brian brought the quad down and parked it over there. Brian's going to ride back with Cletus and probably call her quits for tonight. We're just going to leave the quad for an overflow and then Pat can take that home tonight. And if we need to, my Uncle Alan can hop in if we get behind. So. Right, Cletus just got filled up. Pat's just running right now. He's on the second outside round, getting this field opened up. There we are. Oh, waiting on the pizza. 10 minutes or so. You guys are seeing quite a bit of this, but that's because that's what I'm doing quite a bit this time of year. Dumping at night on my dad's carton. Pat and my Uncle Alan are in the combine right now, that's kind of off over the hill. Alrighty, Jane's gonna dump the truck. I'm gonna go check the drying system, check the dryer, check the dry bin, and I'll probably go up and check the wet bin too, just cause we're probably gonna run out of space tomorrow, I'm guessing. It's coming in right around 24%, which is good. Makes it nice and easy for the dryer. And everything's coming out at 14, which is awesome. So that 14 is actually closer to like 15, 15, five, which is, we're fine with that. Gosh darn it, do I love this smell. Ah, oh, I love it. Man, oh man, I can't see anything up here. All this grain dryer steam is just going everywhere. Hopefully you guys didn't get steamed over, but if you look, there's one ring left. There's the corn coming in. One ring left on that bin. Six rings on that bin right there. So we're not gonna be able to let the dryer run all night because we'll fill up. So it looks like Shane just got done, so let's go ahead and move it forward. There's the 400. Gonna fill me up for the night. Alrighty, up on top of the bin now. Again, as you can see, about one ring left, but that crown is really starting to build in the top. That should be enough to get with to fill the wet bin and to fill that. 
should be enough to finish the field that we're on right now. Then the next field, two fields we're gonna do is they're my dad's personal corn. So we're gonna take that to town just cause it's separate and just let them dry it and make sure it's all separate. So that, and that actually also gives us time to move corn too. So that's the plan for tomorrow. We're gonna do my dad's corn and then Friday we're gonna switch to beans. Alrighty ladies, ladies, gents and germs, 10.30, calling it quits for the night. Everything's just about full. I wish we had someone moving corn or we had someone moving corn. I wish they had someone chiseling right now, but it is what it is, guys. So I'm just gonna finish up in this last hopper and put it up for the night. Okay, my GoPro's going dead, so I'm gonna do this outro really quickly. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearts and Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, how's it now? Woo!